All right, I want to welcome John Russo. He's a business and high performance coach. John is the founder and CEO of Fit for Growth and a high performance coach whose purpose is to liberate greatness for individuals, teams, and businesses. For the past 21 years, John has built up significant experience in corporate, consulting, coaching, and entrepreneurial adventures, which gives him a unique perspective when coaching his entrepreneurial and corporate clients. He's designed, developed, and delivered global uh, capability academies for a number of large multinational organizations and has worked with individuals and teams in 33 countries around the world. John always strives to add significant value to the clients and businesses he serves by being a catalyst for change, excellence, and growth, the inspirational leader that takes individuals, teams, and businesses to their next level. So basically, I'm just going to sum that all up. There was a lot in there. Basically, John's a badass. Let's just let's just take it there. Um, and he's making a huge impact all over the world. Um, and if you aren't already connected to John, then my friend, it is time that you do so. Listening to the Badass is the New Black podcast. I'm Chrissy Chin, your host, here to teach you how to build an online business that you love and in a way that allows you to work a little bit less so you can enjoy a whole lot more. My hope is that you've showed up to today's episode ready to learn something new and will be inspired to take imperfect action in your business right away. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's dive in. I'm super excited, uh, John, that you're here today spending your time um, with us. So welcome. Thank you, Chrissy. So good to be here with you. And uh, thank you for that great intro. I'm humbled to be um, on your podcast with you today and uh, grateful for the opportunity to serve your audience. So thank you. Cool, cool. You guys, John and I are like, we have a history together because, not that kind of history. We have a history in, in business. We've been connected for a long time. I know John very, very well. We're a part of a millionaire's mastermind together. John was my high performance coach and I had like life changing um, uh, things transform during our time together. Uh, he was a speaker on my standout virtual summit and um, we just wrapped up a 16 week private session where I was coaching John, like we've done everything together and it's been a really cool experience. And so I'm, I'm honored and grateful that now I just get to add you to the podcast list. Yeah, thank you. What an incredible journey as well, Chrissy. I think, um, you know, from, from the mastermind to um, us doing the high performance coaching and then your private coaching of me, I think just our, both of our um, willingness to learn and grow from each other, not just to inspire each other as you do inspire me so much, um, but also to like equip each other with strategies and tools and tactics and practical things that we can apply in our businesses and our personal lives. Um, I think that's been, you know, for me, the most incredible thing about our journey so far is um, I've been stretched, I've learned, I've made mistakes and enjoyed that process as well of just figuring things out along the way. And to have you there, you know, by my side um, in the mastermind, in the, in the private coaching has been absolutely awesome. And obviously a huge privilege to serve you as well and liberate greatness for you personally and professionally, you know, through the high performance coaching. So some of those wins, I still smile at you know, there's wins along the way that we achieved for you and the wins that I've achieved uh, in being a recipient of your coaching. So yeah, it's been an incredible journey. Yeah, I think this, that our relationship and what we've kind of gone through together is just a really cool, unique experience and that other entrepreneurs can can learn from and that you can find other people that you can net, connect with and and serve each other you know, in ways that you specialize in, you know, you, your yeah. high performance coaching, um, me completely changed my life and the, the strides that we've taken with you and, and your branding and your clarity there and you, you know, securing these huge clients. Um, and when they showed up, you know, and your application, it was like, you're like, Chrissy, this is like the perfect client, exactly what we created in our ideal ideal client session. Um, so it's just been really fun to um, feed off of each other and share knowledge, like, like you said. So super grateful. 
ready to dive in. I'm ready to have you serve, you know, this audience. And, you know, if you share this with your audience, also they can get some, some more nuggets from you because we know they already love you. Um, let's, let's jump into hearing more about why you jump ship um, or kind of that journey from corporate. You have so much experience in the corporate world um, to now being a high performance coach. Want to hear more about that? Yeah, so I think, you know, my journey has been quite an interesting one, Chrissy. I've, um, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family um, you know, always saw myself getting involved in business with my family. Um, I think I went to, you know, the typical route and studied, got a good degree, got a good job um, and got really tired of being in a, in a good job, you know. So mm-hmm. um, decided um, four years into a corporate career that I would try something entrepreneurial unfortunately lost my dad during that time so that forced me into um, an entrepreneurial business that he was involved in but I used that you know for um, you know to my benefits Um, I learned so much about service about a heart for the community about the community support that I received Um, I lost my mom during that time as well but like so much good stuff came out of that you know met my wife in the coffee shop um, and you know my story I won't get into too much of that detail Um, but like really use that business as an opportunity to learn and grow as an entrepreneur and made it work for me. You know, I think um, we, we were, you know, to something that was really attractive for that community business wise. We served with all our heart. We succeeded. We survived the recession. Um, and, um, you know, I found myself, you know, six years later with a fantastic business partner thriving, but also feeling like what's the next level for me. I then got into consulting thinking that I wanted to get back into Corporate without getting back into corporate full time. Consulting was a great way to do that. So I did that for a number of years, and one opportunity led to the to the next, which um, saw us moving to the UK five years ago. And um, at the time, I thought, you know, I don't actually have a good enough network in the UK to be on my own as an entrepreneur or a freelance consultant or build a consultancy. So I took another corporate um, job, and that job led to another job, led to another job, and you could see like I was you know, not really settled. I was restless to do my own thing again. Mm. And eventually, like with everything going on this year with um, with COVID and so many of the challenges that the world's gone through, I just felt this calling on my heart to step up and serve at a high level. I was um, frustrated with, you know, this title that was over my head and limiting, uh, you know, limiting me by this title and just feeling like I want to serve. I want to give of the best of who I am. And that's to just you know, um, liberate greatness for people, for individuals, for teams, for businesses, um, whether they're entrepreneurs, whether they're small businesses, whether they're large corporates, and just wanting to dive all in. Um, And that was really the biggest decision. So, I mean, it it might seem crazy outside looking in this year of all years, a lot of people are opting for safety and security and hanging on to jobs that, um, you know, that are secure. Um, And this was the year I said, you know, enough, now it's time, now's the time to step up and serve. And and also knowing that through the last recession, I was able to find a way to thrive in that recession where businesses opened and closed around us and our business thrived because of the level of excellence that we strive for, um, our heart to serve. You know, we, we put those things ahead of revenue, but the revenue followed suit. And, and I think, you know, that's a lot of what I'm trying to teach people now is around get your, your, your mindset and your heart in the right place first serve with all your heart and then the business follows suit so yeah that's uh, that's the reason that i decided to jump it was more about passion and purpose than anything else yeah and we've talked about this you know in recent sessions in terms of serving um and and running and leading your business through an abundance mindset and that really when you do that um you know it brings back tenfold it, the, you know, when, you know, you've got a challenge going on that will be over by the time this airs, but you're just serving people so well. And uh, it's completely, you know, you're doing it for free. So there's no financial gain, you know, immediate right there, but you're serving with love and compassion and you have this abundance mindset and, and the finances, the, you know, the profit will come later you know, whether that's through um, impactful testimonials or then they, you know, sign up for a program later. I mean, and so you've just been such a great leader in that when you serve from the heart um, and you lead with that, that great things come. What? 
Yeah, and, mm-hmm. I, and, and I think also just surrounding yourself with like-minded, like-spirited people, you know, so this, this campaign that you're talking about where we've offered six weeks um, free high-performance group coaching, it's not as in-depth as what you and I did with one-to-one, um, but they'll still get the benefit of the curriculum, of the sessions, of our challenge and push, and, and also the community. Um, I'm not doing that by myself, you know, I've got another four high-performance coaches that are also have this heart to serve and to make a difference in the world and when I approached them to say look this is on my heart this is what I think we should be doing people need this right now they were like when do we start they're all in when do we start it wasn't even a question of when we you know will we get paid and how much and it was just like when do we start let's go and we've all jumped in to set up landing pages and videos and all the rest of it to make it work and, you know, we now have, you know, people registered from literally the West Coast of um, US all the way through to the East Coast of Australia. So I feel really blessed that we've got that opportunity to serve. Yeah, yeah, so cool. What would you say to the person out there that is in their corporate job or maybe they're, let's just say they're forced out of what they're doing. Like right now, so many people have lost their jobs or maybe they were running and owning a business and, you know, that's shut down now. Um, you know, shut down and open and then shut down and then open. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. What would you say to that person um, about their future? Well, I I think, you know, there's there's a reality that um, there there are things that you can't control and there are things that you can control. So much of what we've experienced this year, things that we can't control. So if we live there, if we live in that space of why is this happening and you know, why is this happening to me, then our brain starts to figure out all the, all the reasons. And that's a, that's a really dangerous path to go down. And, um, you know, as opposed to saying, well, you know, what can I learn from it? How can I set myself up so that when this comes around again, in whatever shape or form, recession, um, pandemic, whatever it is, how can I mitigate against the risk of that happening? Um, and I think a lot of people have already written off 2020. In fact, people wrote, wrote off 2020 halfway through. Mm-hmm. Where what I'm encouraging people to say, you know, make the rest of 2020 the best of 2020. There is still time to make a difference. There's still time to get clear on who you are, get clear on why you're here, how you want to serve, um, what you want to do, and then to be bold and brave and brilliant and take action to actually make things happen. You know, so that would be my encouragement is that sometimes your struggle is your gift, you know, where you've got to realize whatever people are going through right now. And my heart goes out to people, you know, suffering with COVID or if, you've, if people have lost, you know, loved ones through COVID or lost their business or their jobs. I have this sincere desire to support and encourage them. And there's, there are a lot of people out there like me and like you who want to do exactly the same, you know, just to be there for them. So I'd encourage people to tap into that, to tap into learning, growing, figuring things out and recognizing that whatever's happened this past year doesn't have to dictate their future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Super powerful. And and it's really the, you know, you mentioned the people that wrote off 2020 already or halfway through. If you want to be someone who can generate success and serve the masses, be someone who doesn't write off 2020 right? Because the people that wrote it off are the people that are not going to move forward. And so if you want to move forward, you know, take John's advice, like stop, pause, rewind, listen again, take his advice. Don't write it off. Make the best of what you have left. And as we move into 2021, um, I don't think it's magically going to disappear and go away. So you're going to start, you know, don't write off 2020, 2021 um, yeah. when we get into it. So um, I'm excited to talk more about, um, you know, high performance in this episode and, um, and just get some nuggets so that everyone else listening can, can liberate their greatness um, for the rest of the year and, and moving forward. Before we dive in um, to that topic, I want to, I've been doing this thing where I kind of talk to everyone about their strengths. Um, You know, you are super badass and I know that part of that comes from channeling your inner badass and and taking advantage of, um, you know, the strengths that you have. You know, can you share some of those? What are some strengths that you've carried with you that you've been able to leverage in, in generating the success that you have? Thanks, Chrissy. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, a, a lot of that is, is, is about reflection and, 
and trying to get clear on, you know, really who you are and just being real with who you are because we're all unique. You know, we've been born with innate talents. And if you've done something like the um, Clifton Strength Finders Assessment, they'll give you a list of, you know, what are your top five strengths, you know, and it's, those are good things to know because we are very, very different people, all of us, you know. So if I think my top talent, according to Clifton Strength Finders, is achiever, um, and, you know, that's something that drives me. Like, I have to start every single day with a new purpose and, you know, a new purpose for the day and new actions and things that I want to achieve um, on that day to make the day worthwhile. It's what drives me. I think it's also why I'm so passionate about helping people who are in a similar boat where they recognize they're frustrated with what's happened this year because they haven't been able to achieve their goals. So I'm saying, well, those, those are my people. I get them because that's something innate with me and I can resonate with uh, fellow achievers. Um, you know, my, my sense of belief that anything is possible, you know, that we can achieve all things is, um, you know, close, linked closely to my faith. It's linked um, closely to, you know, my belief that everything we have is in our lives today. You know, whether it's network, whether it's, it's, it's knowledge that we need to acquire, we can find those. We have access to more information than ever before. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've definitely tapped into that belief that even if I don't know how to do something yet, I can figure it out. I can ask somebody. Um, you've um, helped me from a coaching point of view, fast track, my learning curve on things like getting clarity on my ICA and my branding for my personal brand sites and, you know, my, my, my business sites as well. Um, you know, so things that I didn't know how to do, I've now figured out with support. I don't have to do it on my own. And I think just using that belief and that approach as well. Um, and then also that responsibility is one of my top three um, uh, strengths as well. And that, again, that just speaks to my heart of saying, you know, we need to take responsibility for our own actions, but we also need to take responsibility for each other, you know, responsibility for people that are taking strain right now, responsibility for um, our family, our friends, our loved ones, um, and the community around us. So that's really how I've, I've tapped into my strengths to just create the drive that I have. Cool. I love what I've, I've been starting to ask this question to my guests on the podcast. And what I've noticed is that every person really knows and understands their strengths and how, what they can bring to the table. Um, you know, so if you're not, if, if I were to ask you, if you're listening and I were to ask you that question, you'd be like, uh, 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 like, all right, it's time to stop and think like, what am I good at? What are, what can I use and leverage to like, get me to move through or past um, that thing that I'm not good at, right? Mm -hmm. um, so think about that. And your strengths are going to be different than John's and they're going to be different than mine. Um, but what I'm loving hearing is like everyone, like you said, everyone's unique. Everyone has their strengths. So use those to your advantage. Um, you know what I find as well, Chris, is when you, when you have that self-awareness about your own strengths, you also develop a greater awareness of others' strengths. And you tap into those and you complement each other as opposed to trying to compete or trying to think that you need to do everything yourself and where you have a weakness, you need to fix it because you're broken. And you're not broken. Like you've got strengths, drive your strengths, you know. Um, so like one of the things that I, I often have to do when it comes to brainstorming is get other people into the room to brainstorm because it's not a strength of mine. I love big ideas. I can come up with a big idea, but then to to get the color around the idea, I need input from others. Um, classic case today, one of my business partners, we jumped onto a call to, um, to plan for a, a big um, proposal that we're pitching for. We've got a really warm lead, but we want to make sure that we land the deal and then we, we, we serve the clients in the right way. Um, I had four or five ideas um, that fleshed out into so much color and detail of things I would never have thought of on my own. And just the two of us tag teaming together made the world of difference. And, and he knows it and I know it. And it's just beautiful when that sort of thing happens. So I think that that for me is just so important when it comes to strengths. Recognize your own strengths. Recognize the strengths in others and embrace that diversity and collaborate. Yeah, yeah. And it definitely goes to like if you're wanting to, you know, be a high performer like you have to understand where you can add the value and where you need to lean on others. So I think that that story is really cool that you shared about, about knowing where your shortfalls are and, and not seeing it as something that's 
bad or hindering you. You're like, I'm going to lean into this. That's why we're in a mastermind together, right? Yeah. To brainstorm, to get ideas. Um, that's why you've invested in coaching and I've invested in coaching. You know, am I the reason that you are so successful? No. It's you because you are the one that's taking action, but you realize and understand that you need sometimes that other perspective or that person to ask you those questions so that your brain can, oh wait, that's a different angle. Now I can start thinking about that. That's okay. That just sparked another really good idea for me. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but cool. Yeah, no, 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 where you're going with that and, and you're right. Perspective is everything, you know, that, um, professional athletes have a team of coaches, you know, to, um, to think about, you know, their mindset. So there'll be a mindset coach, there'll be a, a technique coach, um, you know, and uh, maybe a nutritionist. Or, you know, they'll have a team of coaches supporting them because athletes understand that feedback is a gift. They want to track and monitor everything. They want to, um, you know, say, am I, if it's golf, am I leaning too far forward? Am I leaning too far back? Is my club face open? Is it too closed? Because that makes all the difference when you strike the ball, what happens 300 yards down the line. So I think that perspective is key. And then also the, um, the camaraderie, you know, just to be able to um, have somebody to chat to and bounce ideas off. Um, and the accountability, you know, um, often, you know, I'd, I'd know that I'm getting onto a, a call with you and I think, you know, I haven't done my homework yet. Let's like, get onto it, you know, because I want to show you I've made progress. And even just that accountability, it's worth having, um, you know, coaching just for that. Um, and then you put all of that together, the perspective, the camaraderie, the accountability and the, the knowledge, the skills that you have that I don't have and vice versa, that we can sort of amplify the best of who we are. That's why, you know, coaching helps you accelerate your progress. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, you're a high performance coach. So let's dive into so that you can share some of your high performance nuggets of knowledge with us. Um, let's talk about, this was something, um, you know, we've talked about and, and this was super powerful in my, my sessions with you is, um, you know, clarity and purpose. And I've been talking about this, you know, a lot as well. Um, you know, is what you're doing purposeful? Um, you know, and, and do you have clarity in there? So talk me through, you know, as a high performer, what you're really trying to help people with get, you know, with getting more clarity and getting more purpose um, in their direction. Yeah. So all of my work I do is, is, is linked to both personal and professional development. Um, you know, Stephen Covey taught us that private victories precede public victory. So um, you have to win as an individual first. Um, I'm super, super passionate about, you know, helping people with things like their sleep and nutrition and exercise and the environment and how that sets them up to succeed um, in business as well as personally. Um, and I think, you know, probably the biggest thing that I've loved unlocking for my clients and, and I've seen that time after time after time again is helping people understand why they're here. You know, why are they here on this planet? Why do they do what they do? What's the, what's the one thing that drives them to get up in the morning and do the things that they do? And often people aren't clear on that. You know, they, they, they go day to day just living life, not really experiencing life to the full, not really serving as the best version of themselves. So helping unlock that for people where, because I know how being clear on my purpose for so long has served me and has allowed me to take on different projects and also choose what I get involved in and what I don't get involved in. Um, that's something that I, I really love um, guiding my clients on, coaching them on and, and helping them unlock is what is your purpose? You know, what is your why? And, and helping them articulate that. And if someone's kind of struggling with that, what would you, is there like a tip or a tool or a strategy that you would use to kind of help start flushing that out? Yeah, the, the thing that I do first with people is, um, you know, I get them to um, reflect <clears throat> and, and just um, I, I get people into a place where they're, they're calm and they're composed um, and just, uh, you know, breathing comfortably, eyes closed and just taking deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth and just finding that place of calm and clarity and composure. And then I get them to imagine, um, you know, three words that might describe their ideal self three words that might describe the best of who they are, that people would be proud to, or that they would be proud for people to refer to them as those three words. 
And that really is a starting point is when people get clarity on this is the best version of me. If I show up as these three words, that depicts the best version of me. Just bringing intentionality to that is a game changer. And it's something that I do in my strategy session with, with clients before they even become clients. It's a free strategy session that I offer. 60 minutes is one of the first things that I do with them. I get them to set a reminder on their phone for 9 a.m. every single day. And I, I have this um, you know, wonderful thought of alarm clocks going off around the world at 9 a.m. in the different time zones, reminding people to show up as the best version of themselves. From there, we've got a base to be able to start formulating a purpose statement. Um, and it's, it's uh, to encourage people to be a certain way. Um, you know, I, I use it for my, my, my kids as well, where I think of when I show up, um, you know, with my family, I want to be present, kind and gentle. And I know that if I'm not mentally present, even if I'm physically present, it's very difficult for me to be kind and gentle because my kids will come to me, they want to show me something and I'm on my phone and I'm engaging on social media or I'm doing whatever I'm doing. And now they're irritating me because can't they see I'm busy? And that sense of irritation is a trigger for me to recognize it's not your kids irritating you. You're not present. Get present and appreciate your awesome kids. And when I do and I look at them and I see the amazing creation that they are and then the incredible creations that they brought to show me, it changes my whole experience of life and, and, and time with my family. Um, and you can do that with you know, interactions like with your family. You can do it with interactions with how you want to show up with your clients. And you can do it with interactions with how you want to show up in general in life. Um, and that really is a starting point for getting clear on your purpose. I love that. And I'm smiling over here because my alarm went off um, and I usually just let it sit on my phone. I don't like clear it out. And I had sent John a screenshot of my phone earlier today showing him something else. Um, and I love that you commented back and you're like, love seeing your three words. Like how amazing. So um, that vision that you have of everyone that you've touched and taught this to of those alarms going off, it's, it's happening. It happens on my phone yes. daily. So um, yes. thank you. And, and I can totally relate to that. You're on your phone, you're doing something, you're trying to respond to something and your kids are asking for something. And I like, nope, like I normally have good patience except for when I'm like trying to do something and then they come up to me and I'm like, ah, oh, like their voice, I think it transforms to like, it was a sweet like mom and, and I'm my voice. I'm like, mom, like I'm just hearing this annoying, you know, kids out and I freak out. Um, so I remember that that helped me a ton to just not snap at my kids as much. There's another little trick that I learned, and it's partly in training your children. <laughs> so I learned this from Montessori. I mean, this is going to be my little nugget that I get to share. Um, someone who does Montessori school taught this to me, and they were having a conversation with me. We were outside. She's got eight kids, and they're all running around. And we're, we're talking. We're engaging. And one of her little girls comes up to her and puts her hand on the mom's arm. And, and she's just waiting there patiently. And, and Elsa keeps talking to me. And I was just like floored. I was like, oh my gosh, this little girl is standing there so patient. And then there was a break in the conversation and Elsa, you know, looked down and she said, yes, how can I help you? And, and then she helped her and she went away. And I was like, oh my gosh, how did you like, what, what, what just happened there? Cause that looked magical. And she goes, oh, it's a Montessori thing. We just talk about how, um, you know, when adults are talking, if you need something, come up, rest your hand gently so that they can finish. And, you know, when, when I can get to you, I'll get to you. And she goes, and if the conversation is going on a little too long, then I can put my hand on top of her hand and she knows that I know she's there and I've recognized her and I will be with her in a minute. And I was like, oh my right. gosh, this is amazing. And I was like, Scotty girl, come over here. Elsa has to teach you something, something cool. So we've been doing that. And what was interesting is that um, I was on my phone one day, like leaning over the counter and Scotty comes up to me and she puts her hand on my arm and she's like waiting there. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And I, I just stopped right away. And then I, and then I was very focused on her and the intention and, and interacting with her. Um, and so that was another little like piece to it of remembering like, okay, they need my attention. Um, and I have to show up you know, better for them, but also where she's also learning, um, you know, how to kind of coexist in this space together. Very good. Way. Super cool. Super cool. I love, 
I, I remember that doing that experience with you and closing my eyes and taking those deep breaths. Um, and it was super impactful um, with that. Let's dive more into, you know, liberating greatness and how you do that with um, people who are really striving to be high performers um, and why that is so important to you. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, if, if we, we're talking purpose and my purpose statement is I exist to serve by liberating greatness. And there's different parts to that. And I've been very intentional with the wording that I've used. And, you know, um, yes, liberating greatness. I want to take people from where they are now to help them unlock something inside of them and liberate the greatness that I believe is in them. And I, and I really do believe that greatness is within all of us. And that sometimes you just need a catalyst to spark something inside of you unlock that show you the way and that's what i want to do is i want to guide people on that journey and with a lot of the coaching um i'll be smiling inside as somebody's talking because i can see they're figuring it out but they haven't quite got it yet and then i'll coach them in a way that gets them to a word or a phrase and i'll be like did you just catch what you just said there that's the nugget that's the one thing and then being able to do that and you see their eyes open up and you realize, wow, that's like, what a gift to be able to take people on that journey. So I really, really get fueled by being able to do that for individuals, for teams and businesses. Um, and I think the, the one word that people often pass over quite quickly is the word serve, that I exist to serve. So I exist, it's why I'm here, to serve. And, you know, I really talk about serving with all your heart because serve is about people it's about putting the needs of others ahead of yourself you know it's um having that servant heart that servant leadership perspective um you know if you're talking about serving with all your heart heart is about purpose and passion you know recognizing what that is and then how you do that is with all you know serve with all your heart and with all is like all in double down like don't even hold back you know give without um, you know, uh, holding anything back. Um, so I think, yeah, for me, that's, that's really how I approach my own purpose statements um, and, and, and how I do what I do. Um, you know, the purpose is why I do what I do, how I do it is with all my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that a lot in entrepreneurs, um, you know, serve it, like wanting to serve, right? Because entrepreneurship is hard. Like it's not, a, I just show up to work and I do what I'm told and I leave my work at work kind of thing like you are in charge you are what's going to bring the dollars into the bank account and you are the one that's gonna um you know make it or break it um and so so many of us get started by just pursuing something that we really enjoy um and so many people that i interact with and, and everyone here listening they want to serve others um so i think that will really really resonate with them um, you know, just kind of sharing that message and, and helping them get more clarity on their purpose. Um, and while we all have kind of started in leading from the heart, there's always so much more that you can learn um, to do that even better and even deeper, I think, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, you know, uh, one of my mentors and, and um, in fact, um, Brennan Burchard, who, who certified me in, in high performance coaching, um, one of the things he often talks about is how you need you know, money for the mission. So you actually have to build a business. If you want to serve more people, you have to build a business around it in a sustainable, profitable way. Um, and it's your moral obligation to, to serve at your highest level and to put offers out there that add way more value than what you're asking you know, people to pay. And I think, you know, as long as we're, we're keeping that in mind that it's, you know, one, you must build a business to sustain the mission um, and to provide a value at a level that is way, way more than what you're charging, then it's always going to be a good deal for your clients. And you're going to feel good about the fact that you're living out your purpose um, and that you're building a sustainable business to enable you to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Love that. What about you know, strategies, there's, you know, when you're, when you're getting started, there's, there's people you look up to, right? Like you look up to Brendan Burchard and yeah, so much that you went and did his training. Um, you know, I, you know, he, high performance, he's all about high performance. What are some of the strategies, um, you know, and tools used by 
really successful people, and, and I'm asking you this because I know you know the answer, um, by really successful people, and you've taught this to me, and I just want everyone else to kind of hear some of these things. Yeah, well, I think, you know, one of the reasons I love um, the Certified High Performance Coaching um, curriculum is that it really is a science-backed curriculum, you know, that as passionate as I am, as much experience as I have, I trust the process of high performance coaching. It's science-backed, loads of research has gone into it, um, which also takes pressure off me that I don't have to have all the answers all the time. You know, I'll bring as much magic as I possibly can. I will serve as the best version of myself as I possibly can every single time. Um, and, um, and then, you know, I, I bring this curriculum. Um, and, you know, really the, the High Performance Institute went out to try and figure out, like, what makes people succeed beyond standard norms over the long term whilst maintaining well-being, which I think a lot of people you know, get wrong as achievers. And I know that, you know, I speak to myself here as well, um, as well as all the other achievers out there, that often like achievers have peak performance, they have peaks and troughs where um, they'll succeed and they'll burn out, and then they'll succeed and then they'll fail, and then they'll succeed and they'll burn out again. And that those peaks and troughs are a little bit demoralizing as well. And I've experienced that in my own life as well, where what we talk about with high performance is heightened and sustained levels of performance and potential. And it's that whole thing about while maintaining well-being you know so coming back to my passion for helping people with their energy you know their sleep their nutrition their exercise environment um, the energy their mood th those are very very important um, the high performance habits that we talk about we talk about seeking clarity um, you know and that's why i'm so passionate about you know clarity and purposeful direction they go hand in hand so seek clarity we talk about generating energy because the power plant doesn't have energy it generates energy so mm -hmm you know, you and I know how powerful it is just to find that place of calm, clarity and composure. At the same time, when you need to energize, then what do you do? You know, what do you do to energize and how do you change your state? And guys like Tony Robbins spoke a lot about that as well, with changing your state in an instant to get yourself into the right frame of mind and physiology that you need to be in to succeed. So we talk about generating energy. Um, then it's around demonstrating courage so not just having courage, um, but recognizing in spite of fear that we might be facing, actually taking action, demonstrating courage in those moments. And, you know, as well as I do as entrepreneurs, that courage is a big thing. You've got to be able to demonstrate courage. Um, we talk about increasing productivity, and that's not about doing uh, a lot of things. It's about doing the things that matter most. And often that's about taking things off our plates, you know, whether that's delegating or reducing our commitments. You know, if you want to double your, pro your productivity, cut your, your commitments in half. Um, and that's a, that's a really quick way to increase productivity. Then we also want to develop influence. Um, so you want to be able to, you know, develop influence that you can help, um, you know, uh, in inspire people to help you on your dreams. And through all of it, we want to raise necessity. Um, and raising necessity is, is such an important thing, you know, that if you've ever had to um, scramble to pay bills at the end of the month, that sense of necessity that gets you to take action, like how do you replicate that necessity when things are going good, you know, when you're comfortable and things aren't great, they're also not bad, that place of good could be a death trap, you know, it could be the worst thing for you or for your business. So how do you constantly raise necessity and that really comes all the way back to purpose. When you've got purpose, when you've got drive, when you've got a sense of responsibility of, I have to get up and I have to serve in this way because people are counting on me, that raises necessity and that um, is something that we, we, we know drives high performers across the world. Um, whether you're a Fortune 50 CEO or Olympian um, or entrepreneurs like us or corporate people or um, you know, any, any area of life, you can apply those high performance habits and they will help you succeed. Yeah. I, it was something that you said a little bit early on, like it just took me back because I remember that I sought out the high performance coaching with you. I think probably in one of those moments where I was just feeling a little bit burned out and I was like, okay, I've got these two brands and I'm building and, you know, very successful doing it. But gosh, like, I'm feeling like I'm drowning here, you know? And it's like, I see these people that are doing way more, or at least it appears like they're doing way more. Um, 
you know, and I'm not seeing the full behind the scenes of if they're, you know, losing it or having panic attacks or what's going on, but they seem to be holding it together. And it's like, if I'm going to level up in my business, if I'm going to, you know, take it to multi-million or, you know, this and that, like, I've got to figure out, figure this thing out. Um, and so I think that was what kind of got me to seek out, um, you know, high performance coaching. I had a mindset coach and so loved that analogy of the athlete, how they have a coach for, <clears throat> you know, different things. You know, I was, you know, pursuing that as well. Um, and I just want to encourage the listeners, like, don't wait for that moment. Don't wait for when you feel like you're drowning and you feel like, oh my gosh, how is everyone else doing it? I am struggling here. Um, do it, do it early, do it before, do it where, when you, you do feel like it's manageable, but you know, you want to take it to the next level, which I think is everybody here. I know you want to take it to the next level, um, and get that coaching. So you never have to experience, you know, a slump or a burnout, um, like you may without that support. So that's just my encouragement to, to other people. We, d we talked about, I think we went into, what did we talk about at the summit? We talked about the six habits of high performers is that we dove into that, right? Yeah, we, we, we went into the habits. We spoke about the six pillars of high performance as well. So um, in my coaching curriculum, um, the first six weeks I'll spend on the, on the six habits that I spoke about earlier um, and we'll get quick wins. You know, we'll get quick wins. Um, and literally from the strategy session, it's go, 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 go. Um, I've got session plans per session, um, a bunch of, you know, great questions to challenge and push my clients. And obviously you always bring in my own ma magic to it as well. Um, but then we, after the first six um, quick win sessions, we go into a mastery series where we look at um, things like psychology mastery. We look at physiology mastery. We talk about um, productivity and um, persuasion mastery, purpose mastery, and then a commitment to high performance. And those um, literally at session seven, I tell my clients, I'm now dialing the notch up. I'm going to turn it up a notch. And they're like, oh my word, like we've had so many breakthroughs already. And now you're going to turn up the pressure. And it just it elevates people's thinking. You know, I am, um, I had such an incredible moment um, this morning. I, I woke up and received a, a text from one of my clients who yesterday we finished um, his 12th uh, session. So, you know, went through all 12 sessions. And at the beginning when I started coaching with him, he said to me, his, one of his goals is to generate $40,000 in a month in his online business. And um, I remember, you know, thinking right in the beginning, I've got ways on, on how we're going to tweak this offer and, you know, he's going to blow that out the water. Um, but at the right time, I turned up the notch and I encouraged him. I said, listen, psychology wise, what do we need to be thinking to achieve even bigger? How, how do you 10x your thinking? You know, how do you, how do you do things so differently as opposed to thinking about a 10% growth? When you think 10x, that's like, wow, that's like, you've got to do things differently. So the message that I received from him yesterday was that, he closed $42,000 in sales in one day yesterday. So there where we had a goal of 40,000 in one month. Yesterday alone, he did $42,000 in sales and wanted to celebrate that with me. And I just think, you know, just proof of um, the, the power of, of coaching, the power of curriculum, the power of the process and the power of being in sessions. So yeah, just really, really grateful for those opportunities. That's so cool. That's so cool. I love hearing success stories like that. And, you know, just people's lives being changed and, and people pushing themselves and like reaching things that they didn't even think was possible. And I know that I'm sure that you helped him believe in himself enough, you know, because he reached it. If he didn't believe in himself, then he wouldn't have done that 42k day and my guess is is that you probably unlocked that in him and gave him the belief that gosh i really could do it and gave him some other tools and strategies to that he could implement to make that happen so so cool yeah and i think that's a, that's the beautiful thing about it chris is that he needed to do the work yeah you know like we wouldn't have got that result if it wasn't for him um and what i was able to do is just get his mindset in the right place, help him with the strategies, the tools, and um, have him bounce back the pitch and say, okay, well, what are some potential objections and how would you handle those? And let's talk about the influence framework and the persuasion model. And have you thought through this? Have you thought through that? And just being able to tag team, it's like, you know, co-creating 
a, a, a future or co-creating the solution. And that's, what's, that's what I love about it. It's like, it's magical when that happens. Um, and again, he did all the work to be present, to be fully engaged, to trust me and allow you know, me to challenge and push him to achieve that as you did, you know, and, and as I've done with you coaching me. And I think that's why we're starting to get the results that we're getting um, and why our clients are getting the results that they're getting through that challenge and push and encouragement. Oh, I love that. I think we probably just need to end, end here because that was amazing. <laughs> Um, if you guys want more of those, um, high performance nuggets, I'll put the link in the show notes for the summit. You can still get access to, to John and all the amazing other speakers. Uh, you have a freebie, a little free gift for everyone. So why don't you share that with them? Let them know, you know, maybe why they should access this freebie of yours. Yeah, absolutely, Chrissy. So um, one, of the, one of the things that I developed um, a few years ago is what I call the, um, the Fit for Growth um, Success Journal. Um, so it's um, a series of you know, templates and pages to enable people to get clear on who they are, on you know, what their purpose is and um, their values and you know, really who they serve and, and how they want to show up for them. Um, incredible goal-setting templates. Um, to again get clarity on what are your goals like what's the why you absolutely must go after this goal um, what are some actions you can take and then how do you schedule those to make sure that they happen um, it's got daily routines where again the daily routine is something I do every single day um, I absolutely love it. it it really centers my morning to think start my day thinking about three things I'm grateful for to bring attention to my goals and think about you know what are the three goals? So I've got a 90 day success plan in the success journal where every single day for 90 days, I'll write down what my goal is for that 90 days. So three goals. And then I'll say, what actions do I need to take on those goals to achieve them? Um, I schedule those in my, in my calendar and then I make sure that those happen. And one of, one of the most powerful things in the success journal is the weekly routine. And I say it's the most powerful because um, I've, this past month, I've actually skipped a couple. And yesterday, when I, I sat down to, to do my, um, my weekly routine, and I flipped back and I realized I've skipped a couple, and I was feeling a little bit flat, like I wasn't making the progress that I wanted to make on a certain project. And then just by doing my weekly routine and going back through the previous week and seeing all the meetings and seeing the intention and seeing um, you know, how I was having these amazing coaching sessions and putting out these proposals and recognizing the progress I was actually making, like energize me like you cannot believe. So just to be able to do that, you know, once a week for 20 minutes, reflect, and I call it the wrap um, process. So weekly review and preview. I review the, the week that was, I celebrate success, I celebrate lessons learned, so mistakes that I'm making because if I fail in inverted commas, but I learn one thing that can help me or could help somebody else, then I'm succeeding. So I celebrate those lessons learned. And then I say, what I need to stop doing, start doing and continue doing. And with all of that, it's you know, what I need to stop, start or continue believing, thinking, feeling or doing. And um, when I start you know, thinking through those things and I get clarity on, okay, stop doing this, start doing these things, do more of those things. Um, it just brings so much intentionality to the week ahead. And then the preview part is also part of that stop, start, start and continue. Um, part of it is also then having a look at what am I, you know, what's the one thing I need to do on each of my three goals next week. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I make sure that by the end of the week, I then crush those three things. Um, and like I said, I hadn't been doing it for a couple of weeks and I really missed it. So it was so powerful to do it yesterday and just recognize uh, that's, uh, you know, that's what that can do for you. So yeah, four different sections there, the this is me section, um, the goal setting templates, um, then we've got the daily routine and we've got the weekly routine. It's available in a, as a free PDF um, download with an online course. I normally charge in the region of $397 for it and very happy to make it available for free for your audience. Awesome, awesome. So you guys are gonna get access to the downloadable, to the course that goes with it. Um, and you're going to be able to take it to the next level, I would say, like in a nutshell, like you just want it to go to the next level. Um, and then what are you, what pro projects are you working on? Like, oh, oh I mean, the short projects, long projects. What, what do we have to look forward to? 
Chrissy, yeah. So, um, you know, aside from the, the consulting and the corporate um, coaching that I'm doing and, and coaching entrepreneurs uh, like yourself, um, I'm, I'm really excited about um, three things at the moment. So um, a lot of people have been asking me to teach live uh, once, once a month. So I'm going to be going live once a month in what I'm calling my Liberating Greatness monthly program. Um, so that'll be a monthly program where we jump online. Um, it'll be sort of an hour and a half, two hours of teaching my best stuff, like just engaging with my audience, giving people an opportunity for Q&A um, and, and just to really take people to the next level every single month. Um, I'm also working on a book and I'm working on an online course. So, um, you know, there is the Success Journal online course, but I have a few other ideas for what's next as my signature course and signature book. So super, super excited about that. Um, and I think just another, you know, three, three new ways that I'll be able to serve my audience. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to experience all three of those. I know how impactful your one-on-one -on -one coaching is. Um, and so I think having those different things um, available for people that maybe can't do the one-on-one the -on -one coaching, whether it's time or whatever, um, and can connect with you and get your knowledge and, and coaching in those ways is going to be super, super powerful. Um, so you guys, if you aren't connected with John yet, um, we're going to play a little game, but first we're going to tell them how they can find you. Um, so you can find him on Instagram at, uh, it's just your name. Do you want to spell it out for them? Yep. Sure I'll put it in the show notes, but. It's, it's John Russo, um, J-O-H-N, and the Russo is R-O-U-S-S-O-T. Perfect. And then Facebook, LinkedIn, kind of all over the place. I'll have all of those links in the show notes for you guys. Are you ready to play a little game? Absolutely. John, I mentioned to John that we were going to play this little game before, and I think I need to go like take that <laughs> recording and then bring it over and put it at the end of the, the video that we create because you were like, whoo, eyes to the front and you were like, wait, what? We're going we're gonna to play a game on the podcast? Yes, we're going to play a game. Um, new thing that I'm doing for this new season of the podcast, so that's why you don't know about it yet. Um, but we're going to, it's called Rapid Fire. So I'm going to give you two options and you just quickly have to tell me which one is you resonates with you and if it's neither then you can totally tell us something else so for example beer or wine wine okay so if you weren't a fan of either you'd be like i don't drink or <laughs> i take tequila shots on the weekend you know whatever yeah. okay 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 cool so, so the crazy thing is like i have half a glass of wine and that's me done and dusted so typically when my wife will finish the rest but i'm not a beer drinker either so all good okay and it red or white wine uh, red. Red wine. Okay. All right. We're going to be sending you some red wine. Okay. All right. Um, books or podcast? Mm, both. Can I say both? Yeah, you can say both. But then I'm going to ask you audio books or reading a book in your hand. That's a great question. And actually, again, both. Like sometimes I will literally sit with an audio book in my ears and the physical book in front of me. And I love the audio books when I'm out running. So maybe I'll go with audio book if I have to choose one. Oh my God. So fascinating. Okay. I love it. Uh, window or aisle seat on the plane. Mm, window if it's business class, aisle seat if it's a uh, coach. <laughs> okay. Uh, driving in a car. Are you the driver or do you prefer to be the passenger? Always the driver. Okay. <laughs> Phone call or text message. Which do you prefer to give mm. or get? Mm, phone call. Okay. Movie or TV series? Movie. Solo workout or group workout? Solo workout. <laughs> plain water or flavored water? Uh, plain water. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Dark chocolate, easy one. Uh, vacation or staycation? Vacation. Oh, we call that a holiday, right? In holiday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it if you're like... If you just stay, is that, st is it a stay holiday? Like well, a stay now, now I think you just call it every day because it's, uh, nobody's moving anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Cats or dogs? Mm, cats. And big party or small gathering? Small gathering. All right. I love it. I love that. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, cool. Super fun. Thank you so, so much for being here, John. It was a pleasure. I appreciate you and taking the time to serve all of us um, in a way that you have.
Thank you, Chrissy. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you. Thank you for the great questions and for hosting the show. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to serve you and your audience. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Cool. All right, you guys. Until next time to all my badass boss babes and bros, remember to channel your inner badass and take imperfect action every single day. Until next time, remember done is better than perfect, my friend, and to channel your inner badass and take imperfect action every single day.